we'll be looking at uh, Azure VNet routing. Now, let's suppose we have a virtual network. Now, understand that uh, machines that lives within the same subnet, the traffic never leaves the subnet. They will naturally be able to talk to each other. Now, as soon as the traffic needs to leave this subnet to talk to another machine somewhere in the, in the same VNet, but a different subnet. Now, a route table will be consulted to decide how to uh, pass traffic. Now, there is a set of Azure system routes that is built in of every VNet that allows every subnet to directly communicate with any other subnet. So that means all the machines can freely talk to each other. So everything works the way it should be. Now consider a scenario. Let's say I have some resource in this subnet B. Now I would prefer the machine not to talk directly between the subnet, but rather have the traffic bounce through this machine. Now, you probably ask, why do I want to do that? Well, imagine you have multiple subnets. You would like to be able to filter traffic or perhaps uh, enforce certain rules. When every machine talks directly to any other machine, we have no way of controlling the traffic. So by imposing a routing table for each one of these subnets, So that's the object we call user-defined routes. Now in that user-defined route table contains the routing rules so that when applied to subnet A, it will include rules such as for the machine subnet A, if the traffic were to reach B, it must hop through the machine defined in subnet C. So in this diagram, my uh, machine here will be acting as a router. We will be building a uh, poor man's router by using a Linux OS, and uh, there will be some settings in uh, the configuration that you need to pay attention to to make that a router. Now, if you rather use a fully managed platform, there's an Azure firewall service that you can provision and then you can configure all the rules through the GUI. Uh, you can also go to Azure Marketplace and provision the Checkpoint Firewall or other uh, third-party vendors that, sold, that sells through the Azure Marketplace. All right, so once again, these route tables only affect traffic that needs to leave the subnet. Okay, another use case would be, uh, let's say we don't want these machines to go out on the internet directly because the built-in system route, uh, system route will uh, automatically directly pass these machines traffic out to the internet where they want to go. So there are going to be occasions where that's not acceptable. You want a uh, certain address to not go through. Now in those kind of use case, we can again use a user-defined route table to uh, have the traffic filter through a centralized firewall and then decide whether or not the traffic should get to the internet site. All right, one more use case, and we'll go into the uh, demonstration. In an event where you have a gateway subnet, now quick refresher, a gateway subnet provides access into this virtual network. So for example, I may decide to deploy a virtual network gateway. to support user style in using point site VPN or connecting an entire on-prem network through site to site VPN. Now in this use case, I would like all the inbound traffic to first land on the server. 
and I can mark this subnet as a DMZ, perhaps. Uh, so I put a less security sensitive uh, resources in that DMZ subnet. So in this type of use case, I will bind the user defined route table or a route table object to the gateway subnet to ensure all the inbound traffic follow the rule defined in the route table. So people don't just connect directly to the machine in the A subnet or the C subnet. So they have to bounce it through the B subnet, for example. So that's another use case. Now the third kind of use case is called forced tunneling. There's, a, there's just quite a few use cases. Now another one is called forced tunneling. Okay, so the forced tunneling, again, is similar to the first use case. I don't want these machines to go out uh, and talk to the internet uh, servers directly because, well, it's not a good practice. So I would like these servers to route all the internet bound traffic through an on-premise, perhaps logging server, etc. Okay. So once again, I will use a route table to advertise or to uh, force the traffic to go through my intended firewall. Now be mindful, once you set up force tunneling, it is a common uh, problem. Uh, so let's imagine you have a machine somewhere in the VNet. Once you set up force tunneling, be careful because let's suppose this server needs to access Azure Storage, Azure SQL, Cosmos DB, all these Azure hosted servers. So notice now, rather than uh, uh, leaving the traffic in the Azure data center. Uh, the traffic now routes back to your on-prem. So it usually adds a significant amount of latency for these servers to get to, to have the traffic leave Azure data center back to on-prem and from on-prem back to these Azure services. So understand this is probably less than ideal. So that is why VNet supports a feature called service endpoint. So the service endpoint creates a, essentially a shortcut so that when these machine needs to access Azure Storage, Azure Services, or the Azure SQL, et cetera, so it will go through the service endpoint without having to tunnel it back to on-prem. So when you go to the VNet and you see a service endpoint, uh, so you know what that means now, it allows a, a shortcut for these resource deployed on Azure VNet to directly access these Azure hosted servers. All right. So before we move on, uh, there's uh, these are the system routes. Okay. So notice the default gateway will take you to the internet. Uh, these are automatically dropped, so they go nowhere. Um, and any other uh, subnet would be pointing to uh, directly to the next uh, hop to virtual network. So that is what allows every subnet to talk to every other subnet. Right. So this is our uh, testing environment. Okay. So at the moment we have three subnets. We can use a tool in the network watcher The next hop tool, let me check if I have a machine Okay, so I'm waiting for the other machine to come up. So All right, so in the uh, network watcher, there's a topology tool and I can uh, start by looking at our topology. So without any uh, user defined route, I will be able to connect these VMs directly to each other. So I have two Linux VM and one Windows. 
the tool, uh, network diagnostic tool called NextHop. So I'm going to find out from my test VM using that NIC. Now, if I were to uh, try to access my Windows VM 10.0.0.4, now this tool will assess the routing rule. Now it has determined the next hop is based on the rule virtual network, just like this rule right here, next hop type. So our goal here is to configure a route. So in order for test VM to reach the Windows VM, uh, it will have to route the traffic through the router VM. All right. So to do that, we'll start by creating a route table object. Now, please bear in mind your virtual network, your uh, route table, as well as our VM obviously have to all be in the same region. Okay. So I create. All right, so let's go to the route table. So this is a route table and the route table contains well, at least one route. So I'm going to create a route. So this will say, uh, now remember our route only applies when traffic leaves the subnet. So I can certainly say uh, when the traffic leaves a subnet, now my VNet is 10.0.0.0.16. So this is my address space. My Windows VM is at the 1 slash 24, and my router is at 2, and my test VM is at 3. I oh, sorry, 1 and 2. So what I can do is I can say, well, if the traffic happens to leave a subnet, now the only reason why it needs to leave the subnet is because it's trying to reach another subnet. So I will make sure that the next hop will send it through the virtual appliance. So this will uh, serve as my router. Uh, yeah, my, my router VM will sit on the 10.0.1.4 address. So that's where my one my Linux VM uh, is created. So this is step one, create the route entry. And step two is to associate it with the subnet we want this to apply to. So I'm going to apply this to my ADB net. I'm going to apply this to VM subnet. So this is where my test VM lives. So in other words, when the traffic leaves the uh, VM subnet, heading over to the Windows server running on the AD subnet, it will bounce through the router uh, in the router subnet. So I'm applying this rule to the router subnet. All right, so I'm going to see if the next hop will show me the test VM trying to reach 10.0.0.4, which is my Windows VM. All right, so it doesn't look like it's uh, applied yet. All right, so I waited for about a minute, and uh, now you can see that this information has been applied to the subnet. So when I try to uh, evaluate if the traffic were to leave test VM and heading over to the Windows server at 10.0.0.4, it is now using my routing table. And you can mouse over it to see uh, where it is, uh, which route table it is. It's in the resource group called ADRG. Okay. And it's using that routing table demo. And the next hop will be virtual appliance. Now, we know the route table uh, is working. Uh, there's a few odd and ends I want to point out. Now, to allow this machine to pass traffic, we have to do two changes. The first change is at the NIC level. 
So I want to go to the route VM. Go to the networking. Go to the NIC. Now in the IP configuration, we have to ensure that IP forwarding is allowed uh, on this NIC. So when traffic hits this machine, this machine is allowed to forward the traffic to any other destination. So make sure that's enabled. Now next is uh, turn it on, turn on the IP forwarding at the uh, OS level. Now that would depend on uh, what is the operating system that you're running. So if it's a Linux, uh, it's uh, Google for Ubuntu uh, IP forwarding. Okay. So there's instructions of how to run the line to uh, check if IP forwarding features turn on. And if it's not, uh, configure it does. Okay. Now you can also edit the sys uh, control.com, sysctl.com, and then make sure that after the machine reboot, it will still forward the IP address. All right, so once you've done that, uh, you, your, your packet will then forward uh, through this router. Now, once again, the troubleshooting tool is called the Network Watcher, and you can use this to confirm your route is being uh, associated correctly to the subnet. So keep in mind, uh, define the route table, define the route entry, associate that with uh, the subnet you want to apply these rules to. Now, we are building the router using Linux. Okay. Now you could certainly create a new resource called Azure Firewall. Where's my Azure Firewall? Oh, there we go. Okay, so this will be a managed firewall service. Now, it will be deployed to a dedicated subnet. You will be able to configure the rules, which subnet is allowed to talk to, uh, which other subnet on whatever port that you want. Uh, this is a managed uh, service. Uh, you will manage the entire rule sets and uh, monitoring uh, directly uh, on the Azure platform. All right, so that is uh, how the route works.